Around 65 million years ago, the Earth turned faster, days were a half hour shorter, and the continents we know today were beginning to take shape. The dinosaurs had been almost wiped out, the age of mammals was dawning, and frogs the size of cats totally normal. They weren't the first frogs or anything. Frogs had been around for 180 million years. Over time, not much about their body changed, except their size. Enter Bealzee Bufo, the baddest, meanest, and biggest frog that ever existed. Scientists found their first bone sample in Madagascar. It took them 15 years to piece together the whole skeleton. Step by step, they put the frog skeleton together, just like an ancient jigsaw puzzle. When they saw what they had found, a huge creature with a weird shield, they gave it its epic name. It's a mix of Greek and Latin, and it means armored frog from the abyss. Woo! This guy didn't hop from one lily pad to another catching insects. Nah, that would be too tame. It liked to live in dry places and used a sit-and-wait hunting style. It blended in with its surroundings, waiting. Then BAM! It jumped out to grab its lunch. It had a huge head, an extremely wide mouth, I know what that's like, and powerful jaws with huge teeth. It spent its days snacking on lizards, mammals, smaller frogs, and maybe even baby dinosaurs. Even though it was the size of a beach ball, it still caught a lucky break. It lived in Madagascar, safe from the large and dangerous dinosaurs that ruled over other parts of the world. The armor on its back was almost like a turtle shell. It was scary and strong enough to protect itself from smaller dinosaurs and crocodiles. Another reason for that armor was that it helped the frog survive in the dry heat. It was able to dig down and hide underground, away from the burning hot sun. The biggest frogs in Madagascar these days are just regular-sized frogs. A perfect mid-morning snack for Beelze Bufo. The largest frog on Earth these days is the Goliath frog from West Africa. It also grows to the size of a small cat, but it isn't related to this awesome prehistoric beast. Now, the most famous frog on the planet these days is none other than Kermit. But he's not very big and doesn't eat other frogs, so we'll move on. Scientists discovered that Bealze Bufo actually does have some living relatives, just not in Africa. Its big mouth gave it its name. It's the Pac-Man frog from South America. Even the biggest Pac-Man frogs are still two to three times smaller than their famous ancestors. They have little horns on their heads, and they use the same sit-and-wait hunting tactics. Researchers use these frogs to figure out the bite force of their prehistoric relatives. They use two plates covered with leather. The frog bites down on the plates, which tells the researchers how strong their bite is. Long story short, Bealze Bufo had a bite force of around 500 pounds. Not bad, but a Nile crocodile's bite is 10 times stronger. Um, probably safer to avoid either of those guys. So how did these Pac-Man frogs reach South America? Well, millions of years ago, South America, Antarctica, and Africa were actually all smooshed together in kind of a continental pie called Pangaea. Frogs could have hopped over via Antarctica, looking for food or a cozy place to live. And it used to be a much warmer place back then. This giant Madagascar frog was unique for sure, but it wasn't the only giant on Earth. If it had been alive earlier, it would have probably made friends with Megan Europsis. Not to be confused with Megan of Sussex. It's the largest known insect to have ever existed. It looked something like a dragonfly, a big one. Its wings stretched about the length from your shoulder to your fingertips. It was flying around way before flying dinosaurs had come along. Back then, there was way more oxygen around. That's why this dragonfly was able to grow so big. Another reason for its size? There was no one else flying around looking for a tasty dragonfly snack. It had time to develop dangerous teeth and figure out how to fly around like a pro. Megatherium americanum, the great beast from America, was the ancestor of today's sloths. These days, sloths get a bad rap for being super slow and kind of boring. But the sloths of the past walked on two legs and lived on the ground. This giant sloth was as tall as a giraffe when standing on its back legs, as heavy as a hippo, and looked kind of like a bear. It had huge claws 
but was most likely a vegetarian. Early humans probably saw it roaming around. It only went extinct about 10,000 years ago. Giant armadillos were cruising around back then, too. They used to be the size of a beetle, a Volkswagen beetle. Just like today's armadillos, they had a huge, tough shell made of bone and was super heavy. They looked pretty scary, but they were just harmless vegetarians. Regular prehistoric kangaroos had flat faces and forward-pointing eyes. They didn't hop around at all. They weighed as much as a horse and were so bulky they could only walk around on two legs. They used their one large toe to move quickly through woods and plains, looking for delicious leaves and shrubs. They might have even used their tail as a fifth limb. Other than that, they have a lot in common with modern kangaroos. But Diprotodon, the largest kangaroo-type thing ever discovered, was about the size of a rhino. It had strong, furry legs, just like a kangaroo. But this guy wasn't into jumping around all over the place. It spent most of the time munching on bushes and lounging by a lake or river. Sounds good to me. The biggest shark that ever existed was… hmm… oh yeah, Megalodon. Imagine a great white shark. Now shorten the nose, flatten the jaw, and stretch out those pointy teeth. This thing was enormous, as long as a bowling lane, and as heavy as a blue whale. Female megalodons were most likely twice as large as male ones. Even though it's long gone, its food is still around. Giant sea turtles, seals, porpoises, smaller whales, mmm, delicious. The megalodon probably had the most powerful bite of all time. And it was so big, it needed plenty of food every day. Scientists have found megalodon fossils off the coast of every continent except Antarctica. Sharks don't have regular bones, except for their sharp teeth. It's one of the reasons why they're so fast and skillful in the water. Giant scorpions used to rule over lakes and rivers, and even swam in the ocean about 400 million years ago. They had claws the size of bowling pins. By comparing them to other scorpions, they calculated that this giant sea scorpion used to be about twice as big as a fridge, if you include its claws. It most likely grew so big for the same reason as these monster dragonflies. They were much higher levels of oxygen in the air back then. Ancient saltwater crocodiles were almost the size of a bus and as heavy as an elephant. They lived about 130 million years ago and were at the top of the food chain. So, what did they eat? Pretty much anything that got a little too close. A few million years after the fall of the dinosaurs, a new gigantic beast took over. It was the Titanoboa, the largest snake the world had ever seen. It was as long as a telephone pole and as heavy as a giraffe. It behaved like a present-day anaconda, spending most of its time in the water munching on anything it could find. The largest lizard ever, the great-grandpa of the famous Komodo dragon, was called Megalania. It had super dangerous teeth equipped with some nasty venom. That makes it the largest venomous animal ever. Some of the largest birds of all time lived around 50 million years ago. Think of an albatross with a seriously dangerous mouth. Their wingspan was around the size of three NBA players. Now, it wasn't easy finding out about these huge birds and their lifestyles. Researchers took fossils all the way from Antarctica to California to compare them to bones of related species. Back then, Antarctica was much warmer than today. It was covered with ferns and was home to a bunch of animals – marsupials, frogs, ancient penguins, albatrosses, and even falcons. You're relaxing in your garden, sipping an iced tea. Eyes closed, smiling as you hear the nearby trees beginning to cause a stir. Ha! Those mischievous rabbits are always up to no good. But they seem louder than usual. Much louder! You jump up from your sun chair, spilling your iced tea. That's the least of your problems, as you desperately hope your eyes are deceiving you. But they're not. And there's a T-Rex standing in your garden! Your movie brain kicks in, and you know you need to remain still, because T-Rexes can only see things that move. Uh, right? Please start running! And while you're fleeing for dear life, I'll tell you about how this isn't the case, as this Tyrannosaurus Rex actually has amazing vision. First of all, T-Rexes are huge. 
In Canada, they discovered the fossils of the largest T-Rex ever found. This finding suggests these animals could stand at the height of 12 feet and weighed over 19,000 pounds. This dino is affectionately known as Scotty. So what does their size have to do with their vision? Well, I don't know. Maybe the fact that they had giant eyeballs? One of the largest mounted T-Rex skeletons belonged to a lovely lady dinosaur called Sue. It's now based in the Field Museum in Chicago. So, it has eye sockets that measure four inches across. This suggests that her eyeballs were over three inches in size. That's bigger than a tennis ball. Anyway, doesn't it just make sense that anything with eyeballs that big would have amazing eyesight? And those eyeballs were positioned 12 feet above the ground. So it was like the T-Rex had a pair of binoculars for eyes. I wonder if that type of vision has a name. Oh, wait, it does. It's called binocular vision. This type of eyesight allows animals to clearly see three-dimensional objects, even if they're motionless or camouflaged. As if the giant reptilian monster needed any help in being a walking source of destruction, T-Rexes also had evolution on their side. On top of evolving over millennia to have larger eyeballs, the genetic makeup of the animal's entire face gradually changed. As a result, its snout grew skinnier so as not to impair the creature's vision. So from an eyesight standpoint, T-Rexes were comfortably set up to be the kings, queens, and rulers of their time. I wonder if any species would be self-centered enough to view themselves as the rulers of their time today. Probably humans. So it's only natural that we ask ourselves how our vision compares to the theropod dinosaur, which is the dinosaur family that T-Rexes belong to. The family name, Theropoda, conveniently means beast-footed. This serves as another reminder that this is not something you stand still around. A T-Rex's vision was so sharp that it's believed the creature could see and distinguish objects as far away as nearly four miles. We amazing humans can do no better than one mile. I'm not trying to stop you from getting a good night's sleep here, but do you know how this makes things even scarier? Despite the T-Rex's daunting size, there's a good chance that the dinosaur would have seen you before you saw the dinosaur. Let's use the eyesight of a more worthy opponent to compare with the T-Rexes so we can appropriately adjust our monster ranking. How about the king of the land and the king of the ocean? The lion and the shark. Much like the T-Rexes can't see still objects theory, the lions can't see colors theory is equally as false. At the same time, it's indeed not a lion's strong suit. Their eyes don't have many receptor cells known as cones. Those are responsible for distinguishing colors. But lions still do have some and aren't colorblind. Although they would be limited compared to a T-Rex and even a human in terms of vision during the day. But when it comes to lions' night vision, it's a different story. They have lots of receptor cells known as rods in their eyes. These cells are responsible for black and white vision which means the lion has very strong night vision compared to a human. But compared to a T-Rex, researchers have measured the bony circle known as the scleral ring in the dino's eye. Then they compared it to the eye socket size in 164 living lizards and birds, as well as 33 dinosaur fossils. And now, scientists are confident that T-Rexes also had great night vision. Add this to the fact that a T-Rex's day vision was already superb. But what about the shark? In their kingdom, under the sea, a shark can see 10 times better than a human, all thanks to a feature in their eye known as the tapetum lucidum. It allows them to see very well in the low-light conditions of deep or murky waters. At the same time, the false rumor about lions only being able to see black and white does actually apply to a shark. On top of this, a shark can only see about 50 feet ahead. Given that the T-Rex doesn't have any of these limitations, and that sharks won't be showing up in my back garden anytime soon, I think the T-Rex still comfortably reigns supreme as the scariest monster. And I've also never been much of a swimmer, unlike T-Rexes. Researchers believe they were actually quite adept swimmers and enjoyed taking lengthy dips in the water. 
But do you think there may be a more powerful creature you can compare a T-Rex to than an oversized kitty and a shark? How about the gorilla? Gorillas are believed to have good eyesight, which they use to identify food and detect the movement of potential prey and dangers. These animals also have strong color vision, which is a valuable asset for locating ripening fruits and treetops. Like all other primates, gorillas have eyes that face forward rather than one on each side of their head. This means that each eye's field of vision overlaps with the others, creating a three-dimensional image. Sound familiar? Yep, you guessed it. Like the T-Rex, the gorilla also has binocular vision. It allows this creature to accurately assess distances and depths. This ability comes in handy when they try to maneuver the complex environment that is the jungle. Gorillas also have a specialized area of the eye called the fovea. It contains numerous light-sensitive cells and allows for good visual acuity. So, overall, vision is definitely a strength of gorillas, which puts them apart from their fellow primate, the monkey. The latter relies much more on its sense of smell. So, all this time, you've been running away from the T-Rex that showed up in your garden, scared for your life. But has it ever occurred to you that maybe it's not chasing you to eat? Maybe it's chasing you because it wants a pat on the head or a belly rub like a stray dog. Are we sure that the T-Rex was actually this supreme hunter and ultimate predator that we've made it out to be? We know it was a meat eater, but maybe it just lived off scraps left from other dinosaurs. Well, I don't think it wants a belly rub. And if I were you, I wouldn't stop to ask. Although there has been debate, Researchers are confident that T-Rexes were, in fact, dangerous predators. And one of the main reasons scientists have come to this conclusion is because of the animal's vision that we've been discussing. Why would this terrifying creature be able to spot things so far away, have excellent night vision, and have its facial features evolve if those big eyes weren't used for hunting? And it would be disrespectful to the Dino King to imply this vision was needed for protection. Ever heard the saying, eyes like a hawk? It should be eyes like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, since the dinosaur had better vision than the bird. A lot of these birds of prey, such as eagles and falcons, also have binocular vision, which helps them to hunt. Plus, do you know which family of meat-eating dinosaurs those birds descended from? You guessed it, the same one as the one T-Rex belonged to, the theropods. Well, I hope now you'll never stand still if you ever come across a T-Rex. You travel along the coast of the North Atlantic. In your Jeep, you're driving through the jungles and plains, taking amazing pictures of wildlife for your blog. And then you accidentally come upon a place that isn't marked on any map. It's a bay with an azure coast. No human has ever set foot here. You've discovered a huge footprint of an unknown creature on the sandy beach. The size of the print is more than half of your vehicle. Suddenly, out of the tropical forest that borders with the beach, you hear a deafening roar. Palm trees crack and break as an unknown monster comes out of the jungle. To understand what it is, let's go back to the past. Hundreds of millions of years ago, shortly before the huge meteorite hit the Earth, a group of tyrannosaurs migrated to the coast of the North Atlantic. There, they got to a huge bay facing the ocean. For a long time, thanks to the natural protection of this place, they were safe from all natural disasters that had been occurring to the Earth at that time. The fall of a meteorite, the Ice Age, and earthquakes didn't bother the T-Rex as much. But they weren't the only monsters in this place. A group of megalodons swam to the bay for safety too. The most ferocious creatures of the oceans and of land were forced to live in one place. For millions of years, these monsters cooked in a huge cauldron called evolution. As a result, a new creature of destructive power appeared. The new hybrid beast has the very best of two ancient titans. Tyrannosaurus Rex, with a length of 40 feet and weighing about 9 tons, it's roughly the size of a school bus. The king of dinosaurs had thick and strong neck muscles that could hold a large skull and jaws filled with 60 sharp teeth. And the thick tail of the T-Rex helped to balance the body. The bite force of the giant dino reached 12,800 pounds, 
which is as if an adult elephant sat on you. Strong enough, but it's nothing compared to the strength and size of the Megalodon. The shark reached 50 feet in length, slightly less than a subway car, and weighed 75 tons, which is more than a tank. This is almost eight times heavier than a T-Rex. The Megalodon's jaws were filled with 300 sharp teeth, each the size of an adult human palm. And the bite force of a Megalodon is six times stronger than the T-Rex's. And here, these two beasts become one, inheriting strong Megalodon jaws, 360 teeth, and a massive Tyrannosaurus skull. The hybrid monster moves on two legs, but has fins on its back and the tip of its tail, as well as webbed toes. Its length from the tail to the skull is 70 feet, and its weight is about 90 tons. This is the largest creature in the entire history of the planet. After a blue whale, of course. Since it survived all natural disasters and had no competitors in the food chain, it's been able to live to this day. And here you see the Megalodon Rex, or Tyrannolodon, eh, however you want. Its roar deafens you. The monster is coming at you. Every step feels like a little earthquake. You press the gas pedal, but the car doesn't go. The wheels are stuck in the sand. There's no choice. You leave the car and take an inflatable boat with a small motor from the trunk. At this moment, the Tyrannolodon grabs the Jeep with its jaws and crushes it like a cardboard box. The pressure comparable to the weight of six adult elephants is now being applied to your Jeep. The monster chews it like so much chewing gum. You can hear its sharp teeth cutting through the metal and rubber on the wheels. And then the dinosaur spits the car out. Meanwhile, you run to the water, start the engine, and sail away on the boat as far as possible. The dinosaur runs after you and jumps into the ocean. It swims like a shark. You can see a fin sticking out of the water the size of a small sailing boat. Fortunately, the monster isn't able to catch up with you. The Megalodon's speed is about 10 miles per hour, but now it slows down almost twice as much because it has massive hind legs. The webbing on the legs helps to swim, but it's still a big weight. The physical form of the dinosaur doesn't allow it to accelerate too much. Eight miles per hour is its maximum. The fin is moving further and further away from you. But at this moment, the engine starts to rattle. Oh no, you remember you didn't fill the tank with fuel. This means that in a couple of minutes, you will be left alone with a huge predator. It won't see you since you've sailed far away. But the shark part of our monster has a great sense of smell in the water. You won't be able to escape its nose. You turn the boat and head for the shore. In the distance, the triangular fin is swimming around. You give it a wide berth to avoid being caught by Tyrannolodon. But you don't have enough gas. The engine shuts off. You start rowing with an oar, but now you're moving too slow. The monster is inevitably catching up with you. A huge dinosaur emerges from the water and falls back, creating a huge wave. It throws you to the shore along with the boat. The monster comes out of the water and runs after you. You have a chance to save yourself because the speed of the Tyrannolodon is about 10 miles per hour, which is slightly slower than the speed of the T-Rex. You run and easily find a shelter. But you realize in time, this is a bad tactic, since the T-Rex part of the monster has well-developed smell receptors. It can sniff you out as well as a domestic cat. You just need to run as far as possible from this beast. You can hear the deafening roar of the Megalodon Rex behind you. Trees are breaking, the ground is shaking, but then it's suddenly all quiet. The Tyrannolodon's heart does hard work when it pumps blood through the huge dinosaur's body. When it runs, the heart works even more intensively. Because of this load, the dinosaur has little endurance. It quickly runs out of energy. Perhaps it's sitting on the ground right now and catching its breath. Tired, you also stop. You can't hear the dinosaur's footsteps. The T-Rex couldn't hunt small dinosaurs as they easily ran away from it. And its approach was heard from afar. Only big plant-eating dinosaurs, as slow as itself, could become its dinner. It's the 21st century now, and the dinosaurs are extinct. So what does this monster eat? At this moment, you can hear the trees crunching a few feet away from you. Through the bushes and leaves, you can see a large triangular plate. 
you run to the side and realize that this is a real stegosaurus. It seems the Jurassic period is still preserved on this piece of land. The herbivorous dinosaur, the size of a bus, calmly eats grass and makes noise. On the other side, you hear the heavy footsteps of the hungry Tyrannolodon. The Stegosaurus senses the upcoming enemy. It gets into a fighting position. Tyrannolodon is approaching. You run back to a safe place and watch the fight. Tyrannolodon runs out of the jungle. It growls, opens its massive jaw, and attacks the herbivore. The Stegosaurus quickly hits the enemy with its barbed tail. The Tyrannolodon falls to the side. Trees shatter into splinters, and the ground shakes under the huge monster. It gets up and furiously runs at the opponent. You decide to run away to buy yourself some time. You come to the shore, jump on the boat, and row as far as possible from the bay. The roars of two giant dinosaurs come from the jungle. You decide to sail along the bay and get to the beach with civilization. While you're sailing, you notice that it's suddenly become quiet. Too quiet. Waves appear on the surface, but there's no wind. The water bubbles, and you hear a terrible hum from the ocean depths. Through the blue surface, you can see several tentacles. They're huge, and they're on your every side. This must be a huge squid, or even a kraken. But then, you see the head of this monster is a shark's one. Now you definitely can't escape, because the Crackalodon swims out of the water. But this is a completely different story.